Hi ladies and gentlemen and welcome to IT Snippets. Today I'm going to show you how to install a Debian base image on a Hyper-V virtualized server. This is part two of my ultimate download server tutorial. Let's create a new virtual machine by clicking on new, clicking on virtual machine. It gives us a blurb saying the wizard helps you create a virtual machine. You can create a virtual machine in a physical computer for a variety of users. Should that be for a variety of reasons? You can use this wizard to configure a virtual machine and you can change the configuration of your Hyper-V manager. To create a virtual machine, do one of the following. Click Finish. To create a virtual machine that's configured with the default values. Click Next to create a virtual machine of custom values. I'm going to click Next. Okay, and your virtual machine is going to be called a download server base because it's going to be the base installed for my download server or for our download server. I'm just going to let it store it in the default location, but you can click store this virtual machine in a different location and point it using the browse button to whatever you want if you want to it in a separate drive. I'm going to click next. Generation 1, the virtual machine supports 32 bit and 64 bit applications. Uh, yeah, we'll go with Generation 1. Generation 2 supports UEFI, BIOS, firmware, and 64 bit operating system. We'll go for Legacy just for the time being. Click Next. Startup memory. That's 1 gig, 1024. Use Dynamic Memory for Virtual Machine. Basically, we're given a kind of hard limit of 1024. And I'm okay with that because I'm going to install a Debian command line based system because you don't really need a download machine that's grabbing lots of resources to run a GUI you use like once or twice a week. So we'll click next. I'm going to click it to our default switch. I'm going to click next. Virtual hard drive, I'll name it this machine. I'll put it in my Hyper-V high disk. Hard disk, I'm okay. I'm okay with it being 127 gig. Uh, you know what? For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll actually make it 40 gig. You can also use an existing virtual hard drive, or you can attach a virtual hard drive. But in this particular occasion, I want to create a new one. I'm going to click Next. Install a print system from Bootable CD ROM. Install a print system from Bootable Floppy Drive. Install a print system from a network based server. I'm going to install a print system from both CD or DVD. I'm going to select uh, ISO. I'm going to go over to my NAS drive. I'm going to go into my ISO folder. I'm going to select the latest version of Debian that I currently have, which is 8.71. I'm sure there's a newer version out by now. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to click Finish. It'll begin to create my virtual machine and it crashes, interestingly. Oh, okay. It can't access my ISO. So what I will do for the sake of this, I'll go over here. Go in here, go into our ISO folder, copy the first DVD for Debian. I'll even just copy the x86 version. I have a D drive on here, which has my recovery details on it, so I'll just create a new folder here and I'll call it ISOs. This is only temporary, so I can right click and paste, which will move my ISO in there. Okay, now that that's installed, what I'll do is I'll point it to my D drive, so I'll go back to my Hyper V system, click on browse. Instead of going there, I'll get my D drive, go to my ISOs folder I just created and select Debian. Click OK and try next, see if it crashes this time. Click finish. It worked that time. I can hit my Hyper-V folder. There's our download server base system. You can see that it's actually been created, so I'm going to right click and going to start. It'll give us a little screen down here showing that it's booting up, so let's double click that. You see it opens up. 
I do want to install it. So I just click enter to install it. And it's now begin to install the Debian based operating system. Asking it to select my language, so I'll go for English, I'm in the UK. British English for the language. Detecting my CD ROM, it's an ISO, so it shouldn't make a difference. Scanning CD ROM, but irrelevant again, it's an ISO. Okay, we've moved on to the installation of additional components. Now it's trying to attempt to do IPv6 configuration. Configure DHCP. It's asking me for the host name of this system, so what I'll do is I'll call it download. Or downloads. No, download would be better. I'll hit return. It's going to ask me for the domain name. I'm just going to hit return and ignore that. Asking me for a root password. I'll enter a root password. Asking me to confirm it, so I'll do that again. It's asking me to set the full name of the user, so it's, we'll go for Davy if I can spell it correctly. I think after nearly 40 years, I'd be able to spell my own name correctly. Yeah. So, enter my name and hit return. Use name will be the same. Password will be whatever I set it to. And then again, to confirm the password and hit return. It's asking me how I want to partition the hard drive. As this is only going to be used for downloads, I'm just going to let it do a guided partition. As you've seen earlier on, I said it's 40 gigs, so 42.9 gig, that'll be fine. So it's the only drive available, so I'll hit return on that. All files in one partition, recommended to new users. Perfect for a download server, because as I say, it's a dumb server, and it's not going to do much. It's going to download, and it's going to copy, and that's all it's going to do. So finish partitioning, and right changes to this, so I'll hit return on that. It's asking me to confirm the changes. If any of your changes lists will be written to the disk, otherwise you'll be able to make further changes. And it lists the change I made, so yes, we're going with that. As you can see, it's installing the base system and it's almost finished. It's telling me the installation is now complete and it's given a label for the disk. It's telling me that uh, you should install the next Debian disk. Because I've only got the one Debian disk, I'm just going to say no. It's going to ask if I want to use a network mirror, so I'm going to say yes. I'm going to select United Kingdom. I'm going to select the FTP UK Debian.org. I don't want a proxy. I'm going to let it install what it requires from there. It's now configuring apps using that. Not sure if the mic's picking that up, but the fans on my laptop have just kicked, kicked into gear. It's the first time I've actually heard them since I bought this laptop. It's now installing some software. It's saying select and install software, but it's not actually asked me what to install yet. So it's currently installing the base operating system. The system honestly supplies and distributes developers with statistics about the most uploaded packages. Sorry, most used packages in the system. The system may anonymously supply the distributed developers with statistics about the most used packages in the system. This information influences decisions such as which packages should go in the first distribution series. If you choose to participate, the automated submission script will run once every week, sending statistics to the distribution developer, and the quick statistics will be viewed on popcorn.debian.org. The choice will be modified by running 
It's good. No, I don't want to participate. I don't like sending my data elsewhere. Okay, it's now asking us what parts it wants to install. And what's interesting is it said the Debian desktop environment. I want to turn that off. I want this to be command line based. Well, that's going to make it more difficult for us to actually configure it. It's going to mean that we're going to use less resources and we're going to use a lot more processing power for the actual processing we want to do. So also want to install print server, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I am going to install an SSH server. And the standard system utilities are for compiling applications, which we may need later on. So I'm going to leave that as is. I'm just going to move over to continue and let it install those. It's now installing a bootloader. It's asking me to confirm that I want to install it to the master boot record. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to select the hard drive. It's now finishing installation. What should happen is it should reboot and then give me a command prompt. It's telling me the installation is complete. It wants me to select continue. So I hit return. There's the reboot I was mentioning. It's given me the boot menu, that's grub, so I'll hit return. If you leave it, it'll, inst it'll actually, if you leave it, it'll continue anyway. And we're at the login screen. So if I enter the username I set earlier and the password, you can see I'm now logged in. Clear the screen. If I can spell clear, and then list what's here, there's nothing there. So if I change to the root directory and list again, you can see we now have a Linux operating system. I'm going to leave this tutorial there. We now have the base operating system installed and we'll begin to build on that from there. If you like this video, give it a like. If you dislike this video, give it a dislike too. If you get feedback on this or any other videos or suggestions for videos you believe we should do in the future, then please let us know in the comments below. And most of all, thank you for watching.